Ever wonder how high cholesterol contribute to ED? Stay tuned to find out. Hello there, modern man. Today, we're going to talk about cholesterol and how it affects erectile dysfunction. First of all, what is cholesterol and what is considered high cholesterol? So what is cholesterol? Cholesterol is the fat that you need actually to make hormone. The hormone need the fat. So you need some type of cholesterol, but too much is not too good. So let's discuss what is normal range. So what is a good cholesterol level? And cholesterol is measured in milligram per deciliter. So for normal heart healthy cholesterol level, the total cholesterol should be less than 200. The LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, should be under 100. And the HDL cholesterol should be 60 or higher. Remember, H is help. H is good. So HDL is the good cholesterol. HDL is the cholesterol that actually removes the bad cholesterol and bring it to the liver. And the liver brings it outside of your body through the kidney. So HDL is good. LDL or VLDL or very low density cholesterol are the bad one. Those are the one that sticks to the blood vessel and create like a plaque, which then restrict blood flow. So think of it like your blood vessels, like your kitchen sink, and then the VLDL, the LDL gets stuck on the side and then it blocks the water from going down to the drain and all those bad cholesterol become kind of like greasy and stuck on there. That's why they're bad. Think of it that way. Now, at risk or kind of borderline cholesterol is between a total cholesterol measurement of 200 to 239 and then LDL cholesterol of 100 to 159 and HDL cholesterol, which is the good one, is it lower between 40 to 59 for male and for female is 50 to 59. So for female, it's slightly one point higher than a male. Now, dangerous cholesterol level, which are the levels that will contribute to decreased blood flow, like a peripheral vascular disease to decrease blood flow in the peripheral blood vessels, cardiovascular disease to decrease blood flow to the heart, atherosclerotic disease to de decrease blood flow overall. So dangerous level is a 240 or higher for total cholesterol and for LDL, which is the low density of the bad cholesterol, it's 160 and higher. And HDL for male is under 40 and for female under 50. So something to consider if the female needs more HDL in her system than a male. So having said that, you do need cholesterol, but you don't want to have too much. Now, this is the common question I get all the time. What do you need to do when you have high cholesterol? Because when you have high cholesterol, I mentioned that it causes endothelial dysfunction. It causes atherosclerosis, which is plaque buildup in the arteries. It causes reduced blood flow. It actually can even cause nerve damage. It can contribute to neuropathy, which is probably due because of blood flow. Even high cholesterol also cause hormonal imbalances that decrease testosterone. So having said that, we know cholesterol can contribute to decreased blood flow. We know the range. So now what to do about it and how is cholesterol measured? Cholesterol is measured through the blood. When you go to the lab, and you just get a little vial of blood from your veins and that gets measured. And it only takes like a day for the result to come back. And then you review it with the doctor. Now, the first thing that you should do when you have high cholesterol is really changing your diet because the diet that contributes to the high cholesterol. And first thing you should do is limit the amount of saturated fat. Like those are the fat as in red meat. It's in dairy product and also found in processed food and fried food. And so what do I mean by processed food? It's anything that is in a box or a bag because they can raise your LDL level, which is the bad cholesterol. 
Now, you should eat more high fiber diet, such as food rich in oats and fruit, beans and legumes. They can lower the bad cholesterol. Now, you should eat food high in omega-3 fatty acid. That's found in salmon, mackerel, sardine, flaxseed, walnut. It doesn't affect the LDL, but it has a lot of heart healthy benefit. Now, if you add in plants, they are raw, not steroids, they are raw. These are found in fruits, vegetables, nuts, whole grain. They can reduce the bad cholesterol as well. And if you need to eat, choose whole grain, as in whole grain bread, whole grain pasta and cereal, rather than just white bread alone. Now, of course, you got to add in the exercise, about 30 minutes of either walking or moderate exercise at least three times a week or every day is optimal. And another thing is quit smoking because smoking will actually decrease blood flow and also limit alcohol consumption. I've talked in the past that children probably take more than 14 drinks a week, but drinking alcohol can increase your blood sugar. It also affects your cholesterol as well too. Now, you should also manage your stress because high level of stress will actually make you stress eating and will also affect hormonal imbalance. But if you exercise, the stress will actually get better. Now, the next thing is how often should you get your blood work and to look at cholesterol. Now, if you're over 60, you should do it every year. If you are 60 and under, you can get away with about every three years or so. If you have a family history of heart disease, you should definitely get it every year if you're over 40. And if you're under 40, at least get it once every five years to check your cholesterol level because cholesterol level can be high and you don't even know it. And all these effects are happening invisibly. You don't even feel, you don't even know it. And I have seen many men in my office for erectile dysfunction. And when I do blood work, I find that their cholesterol is off the roof, like 300 or more. They also have a high blood sugar, which is diabetes as well, and has inflammation. So if you're over 60, get your cholesterol done at least once a year. If you're under 60, at least every two to three years, but at least get it done because it can be reversible with simple things such as diet and exercise. But if you ignore it, it's going to cause major problems as in heart attack, decreased circulation in your extremities and organs, as well as affecting your sex life as well. So having said that, I hope you find this helpful. I would appreciate it if you can subscribe and follow the channel. Let me know what you think of the episode. And know that I have the Modern Man Club and I want you to join me in the sexual revolution to empower men to gain sexual independence and to know that you can have sexual wellness for life and there are natural solutions to ED. I hope to see you in the Modern Man Club so together I can coach you to get out of ED to live the life that you want to live. So I'll see you in the next episode. Are you struggling and frustrated in finding a solution for ED? Well, I have just the thing for you. It's called the Modern Man Club led by yours truly, Dr. Ann. Together, we're redefining male sexuality and embracing a holistic approach to overcoming ED without medication or surgery. I will provide a protective environment for a community and proven strategy to overcoming ED. It is a safe place, expert coaching by me and my team. We provide holistic approach to overcoming ED and an empowering community of men with ED supporting one another and lots and lots of educational resources. Visit mensexualityclub.com at the link here on my right and connect with us and reclaim control over your sexual health. I'll see you there.
Thanks for listening to the Sexual Health for Men podcast. If you love this episode, then please take a screenshot on your phone and post it on Facebook, Instagram, or wherever you post. And be sure to tag me and let me know why you like this episode and what you like to hear in the future. That will help me know what's great for you. And I would love to give you the most incredible free gift designed to help you improve performance quickly. Go to my website at sexualhealthformenpodcast.com to get the book, The Five Common Costly Mistakes Men Make When Facing ED. I would appreciate it if you subscribe, leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen, and just know that you can have sexual vitality for life. I appreciate you. Until next time.